So here are some practical privacy tips for our everyday lives, which happen to revolve around computers and phones. This video is brought to you by privacyproshop.com, where you can buy truly anonymous LokiNet VPN service and pay with Monero, Bitcoin, or several other cryptos and credit cards, and you can purchase anonymously. Get a de-googled phone. This means that your phone can't be an iPhone or a standard Android. You must get a phone that has a different operating system, such as Graphene OS or Lineage OS. If you don't know that your phone has one of those, I can assure you that it does not. In order to be private, you really have to put that Apple or Google pacifier away. Turn it off and stop using it altogether. When you use a spy phone, your every move is followed by big tech. Even Google's standard dialer app and the text messaging app send information about your calls and your text messages to Google. It probably doesn't send the contents of those, but it sends the phone numbers, the timestamps, and information like that about you and who you're talking to. That type of information is called metadata and it is often more valuable than actual content of the message. Remember what they say about digging holes. Stop digging. If you're unwilling to switch from an Apple phone or a Google phone, you might as well stop watching this video. Because none of the other stuff that I'm going to talk about makes really any difference in the big scheme of things if you're still using a spy phone. Stop using any and all social media. With social media like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, etc. Not only are you giving information about yourself, about your tastes, about your whereabouts, about your political and other beliefs, but Facebook and Instagram in particular do extensive tracking outside, their, outside of their own site on third-party websites. Facebook offers the free Facebook analytics and since Facebook owns Instagram, they both kind of work together. This Facebook analytics gives website operators information about the people who visit their sites. But much more importantly for Facebook and Instagram, it keeps them in the loop as to where you visit, what you do, and what your preferences are so that they can sell your information to the highest bidder and especially at election times, they know whose ads to target you with. So when you log into social media, you're followed pretty much anywhere you go on the internet. And of course, any posts that you make, your contacts, and your photos are reviewed, dissected, and analyzed to be able to put you in a box so that the advertisers can sell you stuff, target you during elections, or silence you if you are thought to have opinions that are outside of the accepted official groupthink. Also, you might want to avoid being with people who use social media extensively, as they usually take pictures of everyone who they're with and post them on those platforms where your face gets recognized and you get located, even if you didn't make the post yourself. Switch your email away from big tech. Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Outlook Mail, Hotmail, iCloud, they all mine information about your doings. Some more than others, but they all do it. Email reveals your travel plans, what you buy, what you subscribe to, even your political and religious beliefs. Stop using big tech free email. Instead, pay for an account with a smaller, reputable provider. Also, minimize your email use. Remember, email is not secure at all. Email is not encrypted unless you specifically encrypt it with, P with PGP, and that's not very easy or convenient. And that encryption needs to happen before the email leaves your computer. Email is also filled with metadata, even if you encrypt the message, as headers that contain information about the sender and recipient, the timestamps, the message routing, and so forth, are never encrypted. They can't be encrypted. 
Also, the subject line is rarely encrypt encrypted. Our, all emails pass through at least two servers, and most email servers scan your messages for content to reduce the amount of spam in them. Those same email servers might be making copies of all or certain emails that pass through them. You never know, and you have no way of knowing. If you are also very concerned about confidential emails, make sure that you use the POP3 protocol, which downloads the messages from the server to your computer as soon as they hit the mailbox. That way they aren't at the email provider's server, subject to some court orders or warrants, or rogue employees of the email provider looking at your emails, or possibly a hacker getting into them. They will be safely in your own computer when you use POP3. Also, a word about the secure providers like secure email providers like ProtonMail and Tutanota. Avoid them. They are known as privacy and security emails, which just attracts undue attention. True privacy means being invisible. You don't want to advertise to the world that you care about privacy. Get a new computer or reformat your existing one. There's likely massive amounts of crud that threatens your privacy in your old computer, and it needs to go. Or make a backup of the data you care about, and then reformat the computer back to the way it was when it came from the factory. Then follow one of those how to make your Windows or Mac private guides that are on YouTube or other places on the internet. And also, you really should consider moving away from Windows or Mac to Linux if you truly want to be private. That way, you can avoid the spying that Microsoft and Apple do through Windows and Mac OS. If you can't switch to Linux for whatever reason or don't want to switch to Linux, you can still run a virtual machine in your Mac or your Windows that runs Linux just for your activities where you need to be more private. If you're new to Linux, I recommend using the POP OS as it is pretty easy to use and install, and it seems to work quite well. You could also purchase a computer pre-installed with Linux, such as the HP Dev1 or any one of the systems from system76.com. If you like building your own computers, that's a good option too. I just made one myself, a silent Linux computer, and somewhere up here I have a link to the video that I made about it. And if you're buying a new laptop for Linux, I highly recommend buying one that comes pre-installed with Linux, as it's really difficult to get everything working just perfectly in, in a laptop with Linux. Switch to the Session Private Messenger. Metadata is what other messaging systems ooze. Phone numbers, contacts in your address book, your email, your location, timestamps of your messages, sizes of your messages. Now is the time for the Session Private Messenger that doesn't leak metadata about you. Session doesn't require an email address or a phone number to sign up. You sign up for Session completely anonymously. Session will not even reveal your IP address because the connections are onion routed. Session will never broadcast your presence on Session because it doesn't integrate with your phone book or anyone else's phone book. You just share your Session ID with those people who you wish to communicate with and you will be communicating in complete privacy. I have a whole introduction video to Session and how it is good for privacy. You can find the link for, to it right around here. Sessions user ID, which really is a public encryption key, is unique to each user, so there's no way someone else could be masquerading as your contact, which can happen with phone numbers. Additionally, Session includes a naming system where you can buy a permanent human-readable name that links to your Session ID. It's much easier to remember some dude than a 66 character random hexadecimal string of numbers and letters. 
Session names are purchased with the Oxen cryptocurrency using the Oxen wallet. If you don't happen to have any Oxen cryptocurrency, you can go to privacyproshop.com and purchase the name for yourself with a credit card or some other cryptos you may have. Start using LokiNet. The same folks who make Session also make a privacy layer over the internet called the LokiNet. LokiNet allows you to visit websites that are not visible to the normal internet and can hide your identity when using services like Twitter, Reddit, or YouTube. Much of the tracking on the internet comes from browser fingerprinting, cookies and other stuff that the websites plant in your browser. Therefore, it is really difficult to avoid big tech tracking. One way to eliminate or reduce the tracking that big tech does is to use services like Knitter, LibReddit, and Invidious over LokiNet. To get started, just head on over to lokinet.org and download the LokiNet client and install it. And then you can visit websites on the LokiNet, where you can read Twitter and Reddit anonymously, as well as watch YouTube videos anonymously over LokiNet. LokiNet is onion routed, so there's no way for the operator of these sites to know which IP address you came from. I made a video about five LokiNet websites that you that can help you with an that can help you with anonymity. You'll find it somewhere up here. Stop using Google and Bing search engines. Instead, switch to using one of the meta search engines, such as StartPage. Brave Search or DuckDuckGo. Just as, as an example, let's take a look at one of the results of a Google search. Right click on the link, copy it, and then paste it to a text document and you'll see the contents of it. It's an insanely long URL that ties the search results to your Google account if you're logged in, to your phone if you're doing the search from your phone, and even if you're not logged in, it'll try to fingerprint you and identify you based on your other activities and the computer or phone that you're using. Changing search engines is very easy with a desktop browser. Just go to the settings and change it there. If you're using the LibreWolf or Brave browser or some other ones, this, done, this is already done for you. On your privacy phone, Vanadium already has DuckDuckGo as its default search engine. However, on the privacy phones, I prefer the Mall Privacy Browser or IceRaven Browser, which are both, which are both privacy-conscious variants of Firefox. All of these variations of Firefox on the phone allow you to change your search engine to whatever you like. Use several web browsers to reduce cross-site tracking. I use many browsers. For instance, I use LibreWolf, which is a privacy conscious version of Firefox, which with all the Mozilla tracking removed, as well as their telemetry and advertising taken out. I also use the ungoogled Chromium, which is a version of Chromium that removes all Google dependencies and any proprietary code that is in standard Chromium as well as other tweaks to enhance privacy. Also, the trusty old Firefox browser with uBlock Origin add-on, as well as strict privacy settings, is another browser that I regularly use. I try to avoid using Google services as much as possible, but when I must use them, for instance, uploading this YouTube video, I use Google Chrome since it works best and Google already knows what I'm doing there. However, I never use Chrome for anything else outside of the Google properties. Likewise, when I need to log into one of the Microsoft websites, I always use the Microsoft Edge browser. And yet there are other things that I use the Opera browser for. But I think you get the gist of it. You can't completely avoid browser fingerprinting, but you can minimize what each browser knows about you. The idea is to split your web usage over multiple browsers to avoid contamination. And that's all she wrote. Thank you for watching.